everyone. Good to see you. Um, we, you should have in front of you the purple notes for today. So I will be off at the lab. So take care of one another. But there's a warm up up top, and I promise I, as I promise, I will have a little silly story I will share with you. Um, our first is a warm up. So walking us through. I have one, two, three, four terms. Agreed? I don't want to have fractions. So if I multiply everything by 6, I get 42. Let me change color so you can see that a little better. I get 42 because 6 times 7 is 42. If I multiply that by 6, I get 12 over 3. 12 over 3 is 4. And remember to keep the y equals. If I multiply this by 6, I get 6 over 6, which is 1, so I get y. If I multiply this one by 6, I get negative 35. Okay, this is like the old unit we were working on. It looks like we can uh, move things. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides. That's a y. So that gives me 3y over here. Those would have canceled. And it looks like I can subtract 42. So what is negative 35 minus 42? It gets a lot more negative, right? It actually gets to negative 77. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I wind up with 77 over 3, and I don't think that's going to work. So that's our answer. That's what y is equal to. All right, this problem, uh, a couple of you made the error where you said, oh, I'm going to add 8 and 3 together. No, distribute the 3 first over the parentheses. So I hope you're trying these on your own as well. So we come up with that. Uh, looks like I have some like terms over here. So that's going to give me 18a minus 17 is equal to negative 17. What am I going to add to both sides? 17? Cool. I add 17 to both sides. Now, this kind of freaks some people out. Though it cancels, that cancels. So that's 0. Is 0 a number? Yes. So now you get 18a equals 0. If you divide each side by 18, you still get 0. Is 0 an answer? Yes. That is a solution. So there's your answer there. That's on the warm-up. All right, so we're going to talk about linear inequalities. So we have less than and greater than. I don't remember if your teacher ever said that the mouth uh, eats the larger. So less than points to the left, greater than points to the right. Uh, so just kind of a little silly picture to look at. These are the inequality signs. Um, so each of these means one's less than, one's greater than. So this is less than. This is greater than. These have an equal sign with it. So this is less than or equal to. And this is greater than or equal to because you have the uh, equal sign incorporated with it. So that, that's going to designate, um, when we start graphing these, an open dot these. These are both open dot, and then these would be a closed dot when we graph it. So I want you to keep that in mind. Everyone doing okay? All right, so graph the following inequality. So when we graph an inequality, we want to put it on a number line. Okay, so I'm just going to draw myself a number line. And you don't need to have everything out. You know zeros here, you'd have four here. I didn't write out every value. I don't need to. But being that this doesn't have the equal sign, it's going to be an open dot. And I want values that are bigger than four. So I'm going to shade to the right. OK. Our next problem, let's see, we want less than 2. So if I have 0 here, then I have negative 2 down here. So this is a closed dot because there's an equal sign. And I want values that are smaller than negative 2. So like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So this is going to shade this way. 
is going to go all the way to negative infinity. This one would have went to positive infinity, you know, if you kind of let it keep going. And then this one, we want values that are smaller than zero. Well, that means I want all of the values that are um, negative. So it's going to be an open dot because I don't have the equal sign. And I'm going to shade it to the left. And of course, that goes to negative infinity as well. And then this last one, we have uh, values that are bigger than negative 10, greater than or equal to negative 10. So if this is negative 10 here, and I have 0 down here, I have a closed dot because it's equal to. And then I want values bigger than that, so negative 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and all the way all the way to positive infinity. Seem okay? But then number five, we kind of want to combine things. All right, well, if I have negative two here and I have zero here, and you're just trying to space this out, four is a little further away than negative two to zero. So these are both going to be an open dot, okay, because I don't have an equal sign, and I want a shade in between them. Come on, red. So I shade in between those dots. So I want all of the numbers in between. I'm talking about the decimals and everything. Okay. Number six on our sheet, I want values from 0 all the way to 10. And this is going to be a closed dot because there's a little equal sign. And this will be an open dot because I don't have an equal sign right there. And I want the values in between those. So again, this is just a way of representation on a number line of what's taking place. Uh, five and six are bound. You're talking about you know, numbers in between two numbers, where the others were going to negative or, pos negative or positive infinity. All right, so now we're going to change things to interval notation. I think these are the ones we just did. So now we're saying that we want values that are bigger than four. Bigger than four is going to go to infinity. I'm always going to have a rounded bracket at infinity because I can never get there. If I have an open dot on this 4, this means it's going to be this. This is not a point. This is saying, hey, we're talking about numbers from 4 to infinity. Okay, We don't include 4, but we get really close to it. This one, remember we talked about it was going to negative infinity. So I'll redraw it. Let's go back here and look at this line. Remember this went to negative infinity? So with interval notation, you read it from left to right. So the furthest left is negative infinity, and this gets all the way to negative 2. And it's now going to be a square bracket at the 2 because I included that. So let's incorporate that here. Negative infinity to negative 2, square bracket. Square bracket means it would have been a solid dot. Okay, problem number 3, if we looked at the graph, oops, I went the wrong way. Number three on the graph, it's going from negative infinity, so reading it left to right, all the way to zero. Is the zero going to be open or closed dot? Well, it's going to be a rounded because I don't include it, so negative infinity to zero. Rounded. Number four, let's go back and take a look at our graph. Number four, I started at 10. It was a closed dot, so it's going to be a square bracket. I'm going to go all the way to infinity. So I have a square bracket from negative 10 all the way going to positive infinity. And then this one, it's going to be rounded brackets on both. And we're starting at negative 2, and we're going all the way up to 4. This is not a point. I know it looks like a point, but it's not a point. So just take a thing. So we're reading it from left to right. This is interval notation. It's just a way of representing our data. And then problem number six, well, you remember I, I included zero, so that's going to be a square bracket at the zero, and then it goes all the way to 10, and that's a rounded bracket. Okay, So a rounded bracket means you don't include the point, and it, you always deal with that on infinity because you can never get there. Square bracket means you included it. That means they had it underlined under your um, inequality sign. So what's the smallest number that works? What's the biggest number that works? That's all answered with our um, information on here. All right, so now they want us to make an inequality. Write an inequality of the graph, then give the answer in interval notation. So it's open dot, 
So I want x is going to be greater than negative 2. Well, this is going to infinity, so my interval notation is going to be a rounded bracket 2 to infinity. Okay. This next problem, I have a solid dot at negative 4. So we're talking about x is greater than or equal to, because it's a solid dot, negative 4. And then my interval notation from this is going to be a square bracket at negative 4. And it's going to go to infinity. And then remember this one. Oh, that one's coming from negative infinity. So I, this looks like I want values that are less than 0. It's an open dot, so I don't have an equal sign. But remember, we read it left to right for interval notation. So it's a rounded bracket at negative infinity because I can't get there. And it's going to be a rounded bracket at 0 because we did not include it. So the rounded bracket meant open circle. Closed bracket means, or square bracket means we were at, um, at the point. All right, so defined, define a variable and write an inequality in an interval notation to model each of the following situations. Also decide if it's discrete or continuous. Continuous means it goes forever. Discrete means it stops and starts. Okay, so it says the temperature of cooked chicken needs to be above 165 degrees. So I want my chicken to be above 165 degrees. All right, let's think about this. Do you think we can really get our oven up to an infinite temperature? And the answer is no. So I'd say the highest temperature of our of our stove could be like 500 degrees. I'm just having to pick a number. I know some of you might have a, one that goes hotter, but let's just pretend 500 is the hottest. So this one would go from 165 up to the maximum temperature of the oven. So if we said that oven would be 500 degrees, again, that's not a point. That's interval notation. Okay, your bank account cannot go below a balance of fifty dollars. So x has got to be bigger than fifty. Okay, and I guess it could be equal to it. Okay, but how big can your bank account get? Well, however much money's in the world. I mean, if you're, you know, the richest person, I don't know. But this is going to be a square bracket because it's going to go from fifty. And it's going to go to an infinite amount of money. Now, can we really have an infinite amount of money? The answer is no. Okay, it, it can never approach it. So that's a kind of a silly one because all the money in the world, would this be continuous? I guess technically we could say it is, but it really is discrete when we go to. So I would say that this has to be all money in the world. Okay, that's a dollar sign supposedly. Okay, to make the varsity team, you have to run the 100-meter dash in under 11 seconds. So if you're going to run that in less than 11 seconds, um, that has to be represented like this. Um, can you run a negative thing? No. So I would say from 0 to 11, and it's also a rounded bracket because you want to do it under 11 seconds. And then the number of people on an elevator cannot exceed 12. Can you have negative people on an elevator? No. So your elevator can have from zero people all the way up to 12. And I'd say that's got to be a square bracket. I guess the zero could be a square bracket as well. Could an elevator go up and down without people in it? Well, sure. Think about it. You know, if you push the button and the elevator comes up to pick you up and then no one's in there. So I'd say square brackets on each. So these would be discrete. And I, I think that now would be I think all of these have to be discrete because there's got to be a top limit to it, right? Okay. And so So you all want a story, and someone said they wanted to hear about a Las Vegas story. All right, so uh, there's a dice game in in uh, Las Vegas, an all around mini casino called craps. And craps works like this. You have a pair of dice, so that's two. And the simplest notion, and there's an unbelievable amount of rules that go with this game. The simplest notion is if I were to add my dice together and get any of these numbers, that would be really good. Okay? So I had a friend of mine who was that I taught with, his brother-in-law came into town. His brother-in-law 
was he had quite a bit of money. Uh, he probably had close to fifty thousand dollars cash on him, and he wanted to go out and have us roll the game of craps. And so you all know what dice look like. This is how the numbers are on that. And that's basically all of the outcomes. So you throw two of them together and you try and get them to add up. Well, we were having a lot of fun and we were getting uh, quite a bit of things free for us. Uh, one of the things that was free for us is they gave us dinner for free at um, a place called the Palace Station Casino, which was a local casino. And uh, so we had steak and lobster for dinner. And it was basically my friend George and his brother-in-law and I, and we ate for free. This guy was doing all the gambling. We ate for free. We gambled. He allowed, he sat there and gambled. He would have us roll the dice for him. And so after that, we asked, do they have a limo that we could borrow and be chauffeured around town, and then we'll come back later to play more? So they gave us the limo. It was a chauffeured limo. And we went to the Stratosphere, which was the really tall place in Vegas. Uh, there's rides at the top, so the guy wanted to play more craps there. He got us all of the rides at the top given to us for free. They just said, yeah, here, here's tickets. You can do it because this guy was gambling a, a silly amount of money. Later on, we take that same limo and we go down to Caesar's Palace. And when you're in a limousine, Caesar's Palace will um, allow you to enter in the high rollers, the people who gamble a lot of money location. So I walked into Caesar's Palace and I was asked by my friend's brother-in-law if I would like to throw the bones, which means roll the dice in his lingo. So I did. And I was rolling the dice and the far side of the craps table and how a craps table looks, it's, it's a big like a rectangle and it's probably close to 20 feet long on a big one, probably about five feet wide. Okay, so it's a relatively large table. While I'm over here in this position to roll the dice, and I noticed over here are two people who uh, were kind of well-dressed. Well, one of them had long blonde hair, female, and one of them had black spiky hair, and all these tattoos up and down his arm. Well. My friend, who I was with, and his brother-in-law, they tapped me like, dude, do you know who's opposite of the table? Well, this was Pamela Anderson, and she was married to Tommy Lee from Motley Crue. And so Pamela and Tommy were at the opposite side of the table that I was rolling dice. They were betting on my roll. So I'd like to think that uh, myself and uh, Tommy and Pamela have a really nice relationship, but uh, I don't think they knew who the heck I am. But that's your Vegas story, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I would like you to start working on your homework, please. It's SLI number one. It's in the next section in your book, which if you're going into your book, it's pages 29 and 30. If you get it all done, you don't have any homework this weekend. Uh, do me a favor. Please plug in your Chromebooks if you're using those. Make sure you get everything cleaned up. And please be good for the sub. Okay. Hope you all have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. Bye-bye.